Dear Daddy, 47 years ago, you brought me into this world, and I had to have looked at you and smiled. I had to have been excited about the incredible journey and adventures you would soon be giving me. You did cool things with me, and you took me cool places. You shared your love of life and adventure with me. I've admired so many things about you. Your strength, your sense of adventure, your sense of humor, your ability to just do things and figure it all out as you went along. It seemed to me whenever you got an idea to do something, you just made it happen. You tried it out, and sometimes it worked, and sometimes it didn't. But the main thing was that you just went for it. You had a dream to live on the water, and you and Mom found Rumsey Island in Joppa Town, and that's where I got to grow up, far from the city, and I loved it. You learned to be a waterman. You bought a wooden cabin cruiser, and I so enjoyed all of our boat rides and overnight trips to Maxwell Point, Hartmiller Island, and the harbor. I've got so many terrific memories of being on the water, all the swimming and jumping off the pier you built. Speaking of the pier, I remember you buying that business from the neighbor, and I remember you getting up in the middle of the night when the waters were promised to move the barge. I remember proudly saying, my dad built that whenever I'd pass a pier or a bulkhead that I knew you had built. You were always looking at new business ventures and opportunities. There was the painting wall murals, the planetarium lights for kids' rooms, the flea market adventures, and the hot tub adventures. But the best was when you bought the gyro ride, and we would spin each other round and round. That was the beginning of your new company, and Chesapeake Bay Construction became Chesapeake Recreation Rentals. We gradually got so many cool rides and attractions, then out of that, our party center, Jumpin' Jubilee, was born, and you put in a rock wall and a zip line, too. You made so many kids so happy. I've always so admired your strength. For instance, the way you could just fling those moon bounces around like nothing while the 20-year-olds struggled with them. You have loved hard work. You live for it. I think your motto was, the heavier the better, and I think your co-workers would have agreed. I got to be your partner in the business. It was so much fun going to the IAPA conventions with you and going around to the vendors to see what fun thing we wanted to buy next for the business. You have blessed me with the job I love. I do what I do because of you. Because one day, when a client requested a face artist, you looked at me and said, Hey, Annette, you want to paint faces? And I said, Sure, why not? And then you took us to the Halloween party show in Chicago to meet the pros, and you bought me my first kit. Well, I haven't put a brush down since, and now I make a living at it. Recently, I found your balloon magazines the ones you got when you were doing balloon twisting for fun, and you had lots of decor magazines, too. Ironically, that's exactly what I'm doing now. I'm the age you were when you got those magazines. I wish we could be doing this together. You so loved the outdoors, and so I did, too. You loved the snow. We lived for it. We hiked in it, and we played in it. We'd even roll around in it. I remember you going out for joy rides, and I remember once you ended up in the ditch, and needed Mom, who hated the snow more than anything, to drive out to rescue you so you could create some contraption to pull yourself out, and we came, and you did. You would still take me sledding, even if I was sick, and Mom didn't want me to go, and then suddenly, from a great day in the snow, I was well. You knew the best cure. We went on so many awesome trips. You took me skiing when I was 14. We went to the Poconos, and I remember we got to the top, and I said, What do I do now? And you told me, I don't know, just fall before you hit a tree. That was my first and only lesson that has suited me well. After I learned, we'd be the first on the slopes and the last to get off. You took me cross-country skiing and snowshoeing in the Adirondack Mountains, and I remember when we went at dark and the trail was illuminated with luminaires and it was so beautifully perfect. There was also all of the canoeing and the rafting trips. There was rock climbing. And then there was caving and the Halloween cave hunts. It was a cold October and we were on an annual cave adventure like the Amazing Race. And I remember you just jumped right in the cold water to get the clue for the team. You loved nature and hikes. You took me to lots of museums. I've got all of your tree, bird, seashell, and wildflower identification books. You taught me to identify poison ivy and to eat certain wildflowers and lilies. We'd pick up everything. I had quite the feather collection and rock collection, too. I remember the horseshoe crabs you had on the bedroom wall at Williamson Avenue. I guess Mom got you back 
when she did the pink Victorian bedroom decor after that. You introduced me to camping, and sleeping in a tent was the best, right up there with the whole campfire thing, and especially those s'mores. I remember you journaling each night by the lantern about all that we had done and seen each day. I have your campfire cooking journals, too. You love taking pictures, and you took hundreds of photos, and I'd so look forward to the slideshow after each trip. There was our overnight mule trip in the rain, but it was still perfect, and we got to ride on the trails all day. You shared your apple with your mule. There was our family cruise to Bermuda, and you took me helmet diving and parasailing with you. When we'd go away, you'd have me up bright and early, and we'd get back late to be sure we wouldn't miss a thing and make the most of each day. I'd awake to you yelling, Rise and shine! We always did new things and went new places. You believe that life was just too short to do the same thing twice. I love doing everything with you, except for when you went bungee jumping and I didn't follow you then, and when you went winter camping. I always bragged about you to my friends, though, when you were doing those awesome and extreme adventures, like when you go ice climbing or whitewater paddling. One, two, three, four... I wish I was an apple, a-hanging on a tree And every time I send me past, she take a bite of me Get along home, Cindy, Cindy, get along home Get along home, Cindy, Cindy, I'll marry you sometime Cindy got religion, she had it once before But when she heard my old banjo, she's the first one on the floor Get along home, Cindy, Cindy, get along home Get along home, Cindy, Cindy, I'll marry you sometime You did some other super awesome trips, too, that I wish I could have gone on with you, like when you went canoeing in the Everglades with the alligators, or when you spent three weeks canoeing the gorgeous Rio Grande River. You had so many interesting hobbies. You especially loved woodworking, and that was great for me. I remember the building blocks and the mini sliding board you made for me, the one I taught Lady, our German Shepherd, to go down. And then there was the surprise dollhouse. You were making it at the kitchen table, and I had no idea what it was going to be. But I remember you manipulating all those itty-bitty pieces with your huge loving hands. You built a bar for the basement, a huge tower for the cats, and an incredible canoe. I remember the three of us in it along with all the crab pots because we were going crabbing. I don't know how we and the crabs all fit, but you made it happen, and that eventually became my very favorite food. Another thing about that canoe was that you even built rigging for it to be a sailboat. Looking back, I don't know how you did it, but you did. I remember you making this really cool jewelry out of safety pins and beads, and then there was this really cool wire frame dip art of grapevines, and then there was wall murals you were painting, like paint by numbers projected onto the wall. There was also your bowls and lampshades made from popsicle sticks. You built intricate model ships. Then there were the connects, and you were building model amusement park rides with them, and the whole basement was full of your connect sculptures. So many projects. You were always working on a project. You couldn't sit still. Too many things you wanted to do. And sleep? Well, life was too short to sleep. You didn't want to spend one-third of your life sleeping, and you surely didn't. You definitely were not a lazy boy recliner kind of man. The more upright the chair, the better. You were ready to go. You even made movies fun. Our favorite show was Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, during which, to some part of it, we'd get up, run around, and play father leader up and over the dining room chairs and all around the house during our favorite song, Me Old Bamboo. You loved animals, and I got to grow up with lots of pets. Many you rescued. There were our dogs Lady, and then Susie and Crazy Heidi. I remember all the injured birds, too. And then there were all the cats, from Duchess to Princess, Rascal and Misty. And you embraced my beloved Chester, your grand dog. He went everywhere with us. As for holidays, you sure made Hanukkah slash Christmas and Halloween my favorites. You loved the lights of Christmas, and we would drive far to a Christmas village in Pennsylvania, and I couldn't wait to come over the hill when it looked like a magical wonderland. 
You would decorate our whole house in blue along with the tree. It was all magical, and I'd sit and just gaze at the tree and all of the mirrored ornaments for hours. Then, for Halloween, I remember the year you put on this huge dragonish headpiece to answer the door and scare the trick-or-treaters. Later, we'd dress up and go to Fells Point together and have a blast people-watching. Dad, I love your laugh and your sense of humor. You have such a hearty laughter, and I've loved laughing with you. You could always laugh at yourself, and you taught me to do the same. We were never touchy-feely, and we rarely spoke the words, I love you. But I knew it, and I felt it, and now I tell you all the time. Last February, Valentine's Day, I asked if you would be my Valentine, and you looked at me shockingly, paused, and then said I'd be delighted. I'll always remember those words. I've admired you so much, the way you never hesitated and just jumped right in to do anything or try anything you set out to do. Not knowing what or how never stopped you. You just did it. You just figured it out. You had no fear. You were always willing to take the risk. You just did it. The only regret you ever shared was that you didn't grow up with other kids. I sure hope that is your only regret. You have embraced life to the fullest. I miss you so much. And I feel robbed of so much more time and things to do together. I am so grateful and honored to call you dad. And that you got to be my dad. Now I can only comment on the 47 years of your life that I was a part of. I know you had a whole lifetime of adventures before me. So this is where we get to hear the rest of your story from family and friends. I think we'll see the theme of you just jumping into things. Like I heard you ask mom to marry you after just a week. Nothing stopped you. You had no hesitation. You just did it. I love you, Dad. You love the song, Daddy's Hands. This is for you, Dad. Daddy!